Hey there, folks, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we introduced a beautiful new result called the Fundamental Theorem for Line Integrals. This gives us an easy way to evaluate line integrals of gradient fields, provided that we know a potential function, little f. It says that the line integral along a curve c is simply f at the end point of the curve minus f at the starting point of the curve. Stated a little differently, the fundamental theorem gives us a nice way to evaluate line integrals of conservative vector fields. These are the vector fields that can be written in the form gradient of f. As an immediate consequence, we saw that every conservative vector field is automatically path independent. If you have two paths that start at the same point and end at the same point, then you can compute the line integral of your vector field along either path. Since the endpoints are the same, the line integrals will have the same value. Pretty incredible. Remarkably, the converse of this result is also true. If your vector field is path independent, then it must also be conservative. The proof of this result is a little bit more involved, so I'm not going to do it here. But you're welcome to check it out in the textbook and ask me if you have questions. From now on, though, you're free to use this result as you wish. You can also mine out some other cute results from the fundamental theorem, such as if you're integrating a conservative vector field along one of these loops where the starting and ending point is the same, well, what do you think the line integral is going to be? I think it's going to be zero. After all, the starting point and the ending point are the same. So the line integral along any one of these loops is zero. So the point is there are some really cute results that you get about conservative vector fields from the fundamental theorem. But if I just hand you a vector field, how do you know if these results apply? How do you know if that vector field is conservative? At this point, we don't have a nice, simple test. So in this video, we're going to design one. OK, the question at hand is, how do you know if a given vector field f, whose components are, say, p and q, is conservative? Well, we actually did something like this at the end of the last video. We showed that a given vector field was not conservative by finding two paths, c1 and c2, that started at the same points and ended at the same points, but along which the line integrals of our vector field gave different values. So the vector field is therefore path dependent, and hence it can't be conservative. This is one option for showing that a vector field is not conservative, but it requires a bit of work, right? You'd have to compute at least two different line integrals by definition. And so this isn't a very efficient method. Instead, we're going to follow a different approach that's based on a very simple observation. Let's suppose for a second that this vector field really is conservative. If capital F is conservative, then it can be written as the gradient of some scalar field little f. Ah, but that means that its components, p and q, must be the same as the components of this gradient field, which we know are partial f over partial x and partial f over partial y. So if this vector field is conservative, then p must be equal to partial f over partial x, and q must be equal to partial f over partial y. By taking one more derivative of each of these expressions, we can draw an interesting connection. If I take the partial derivative of p with respect to y, well, that's the same as taking the partial derivative of this guy with respect to y. That would give me partial squared f over partial x partial y. And likewise, if we take the partial derivative of q with respect to x, we're going to get partial squared f over partial y partial x. Now, what result do you know that connects these two derivatives? Maybe Clairaut's theorem, right? If the assumptions of Clairaut's theorem are satisfied, meaning that the second order partial derivatives of f are nice and continuous, then these two derivatives should really be equal. We can take the derivatives in either order. Ah, so this is telling us some very interesting information. It says that if f is a conservative vector field and the assumptions of Clairaut's theorem are satisfied, then partial p over partial y must be equal to partial q over partial x. If this equality does not hold, then your vector field is not conservative. At the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you an example where we do exactly this. But for now, I want to focus on something even more exciting. It turns out that under certain conditions, you can actually go the other way. 
if you can show that partial p by partial y is equal to partial q by partial x, a very easy condition to check, then it will turn out that your vector field is conservative. In order to state this result properly though, we're going to need some new terminology. Okay, I have some new definitions regarding the types of curves and regions that we'll be working with going forward. First up is a closed curve. We say that a curve is closed if its initial point is the same as its terminal point. So its endpoints match up sort of like a loop. Secondly, we have a simple curve. This is a curve that doesn't intersect itself, except we allow for the possibility that it intersects itself at its endpoints. Maybe the endpoints match up, but there should be no other crossings. So for example, this first curve you see here is not closed because the endpoints are different, but it is simple. It doesn't cross itself. The second curve is still not closed, but it's also not simple due to this crossing. The third curve is closed. The endpoints do match up, but it's not simple. And finally, the fourth curve is both closed and simple. The endpoints match up and there are no crossings. This is sort of like a traditional loop. And here are your definitions regarding regions in the plane. Firstly, we'll say that a region R is connected if, well, it's one piece. But more formally, more mathematically, it's connected if any two points in the region can be joined by a path in the region. Next up is simply connected. This is a term that you may not have heard before. It's like a stronger version of connected. We say that a region is simply connected if it is both connected and any simple closed curve in the region encloses only points within the region. The way that I like to think of this is that the region doesn't have any holes in it. So let's take a look at these examples. In the first case, you can see that the region is not connected. After all, there are points here and here that can't be joined with a path that stays within the region. So it's not connected, and therefore it's also not simply connected. This second region is connected. I can join any points in the region with a path inside, but it's not simply connected. After all, if I draw this simple closed curve, you can see it's inside the region, but it encloses points in this empty space. It encloses points outside the region. It's not simply connected. Even if your region is missing just one point somewhere in the middle, that's enough to prevent it from being simply connected. We can use exactly the same argument as before. This region though is of course connected. And finally, we have this typical blob shape. There are no holes, it is both connected and simply connected. Okay, with our new definitions in hand, we're ready to state the theorem that we alluded to a few minutes ago. This is sometimes called the component test because we're gonna be testing the component functions P and Q to determine if our vector field F is conservative. So here's the setup. We start with a vector field F whose component functions P and Q have continuous partial derivatives. This is just to ensure that the assumptions of Clairaut's theorem are satisfied. Okay, we have two statements. The first says that if partial p by partial y is not equal to partial q by partial x, then f is not conservative. We saw a few slides ago that if f is conservative, then we must have partial p by partial y equals partial q by partial x. So if this fails, f is not conservative. The second statement goes the other way, but we have to add in one more condition, simply connected. If it turns out that the domain of your vector field is simply connected, we saw the definition of that on the last slide, and this equality of partial derivatives holds, then your vector field really is conservative. These are easy conditions to check, so this is going to be your go-to test for conservative, conserv conservative conservativeness. I'm going to wrap up this video with two examples to show how the component test can be used. In each case, we're given a vector field and we want to determine whether or not it's conservative. So first of all, we have the vector field fxy equals x minus yx. To check if it's conservative, we're going to look at the partial derivative of this function p with respect to y and the partial derivative of this function q with respect to x we find that partial p by partial y is minus 1, and partial q by partial x is 1. Ah, they're different. 
If the partial derivatives here are not the same, the component test says this vector field is not conservative. End of story. This is actually the same vector field that we saw at the end of the last video. We proved it wasn't conservative by finding two paths from the same starting point to the same ending point where the line integrals gave different values. Now we have a much shorter argument. Okay, in our second example, we're dealing with this vector field. And again, we want to know if it's conservative. So we're going to look at the partial derivative of this function, p, with respect to y, and the partial derivative of this function, q, with respect to x. We find that partial p by partial y is 3x squared, and partial q by partial x is also 3x squared. Ah, so the derivatives match up. We should probably make sure, though, that the domain here is simply connected. You can see that we don't have any restrictions on our domain. x and y can take on any values from R2. So the domain is simply connected, right? R2 is one connected piece. There are no holes in it. So since our derivatives agree and our domain is simply connected, the component test says this vector field is conservative. Notice that the component test does not tell you how to find a potential function, the function that we would need to use if we want to apply the fundamental theorem. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to find it.